are you tonight? I am a few minutes late and I apologize, but I have a question for you. Tonight, we're just gonna have real talk. We're just gonna have a minute to just sit down and talk. And we're gonna talk about something I think you might need to know about. And what I think you need to know is how do you know when enough is enough? How do you know when you've had all you can possibly take, you feel like you can't take not one more day, or maybe you feel like, hey Paula, how are the boys? Or maybe you feel like they hurt my feelings so bad, I just can't take it anymore. How do you know when enough is enough? When you feel like you are on this island by yourself, or you feel like you don't have any friends, or your friends who you thought were your friends aren't your friends, or maybe somebody you want to be your friend doesn't know you want them to be your friend, do all these thoughts go through your head? Can I get my homework done? Am I gonna be at school on time? Did I pack my lunch? Am I gonna buy my lunch? And did I get my homework done? Good, 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 I'm glad you're doing great. Did I, did I get my assignments turned in on time? How do you know when enough is enough? Well, let me answer that for you. I wanna share something with you that I started thinking about today. And when people say things, they may not mean them the way they came out. So I wanted to share with you who is accountable for you? Who are you responsible for? So a lot of times people or parents or whoever you're with, your grandparents, your aunt, your uncle, whoever, will say, now I need for you to watch your little brother or your little sister. It's, it's up to you. You have to watch them. They're your responsibility. That is true if they need help. So yes, you are somewhat accountable for their well-being if you're helping babysit them or helping watch them. Or maybe you go to the ball field and they're like, you have to take your sibling because you can't go alone or they have to go with you. So there's another example of, yes, you are kind of responsible for them. But when you look at how you act and how you react to things, you are 100% responsible for that. You yourself are 100% responsible for that. And I felt like it was very important to share that tonight because I think a lot of times we get upset and, and we say things or we do things that really aren't very Christ-like. So how do you know when enough is enough? Well, let me share with you something I read in Luke. And it talks about when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he went to pray and he asked his friends to, to pray for him. They fell asleep. So he came to him again and he said, guys, please, come on, can you pray with me? And they're like, oh yeah, 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 we're sorry, we're sorry, we got this, we got this. And they fell asleep again. So the third time he was like, just go ahead and sleep. So he was kind of on an island by himself, wasn't he? So then we have to look at what physical abuse he went through before he was even crucified. How horrible he was beaten. And if you think about him having to be nailed, physically nailed to a cross, and then we have to think about not only was he physically nailed to the cross, brutally beaten, Here's, guess what happens next? He's on the cross and people are making fun of him and mocking him. The only perfect man to ever walk the face of this earth, the only person who could ever answer any question, who could perform miracles, who could be the best friend you ever wanted to have, is still the person that can be in your life today. So when you think about how horrific that was and how he finally went through all that and was ready to face death, he said to the murderer and the thief that were beside him, one of them said, you are, basically they're saying, I believe in you, you're the one true God. And he says, tonight you will be with me in paradise. That means even in your very last breath, you have the opportunity to accept Jesus into your heart. What I wanna challenge you with is why wait to your very last breath? When is enough enough? When do you determine, I'm not gonna run from God anymore, I'm gonna be a Christian that serves the one true God, and if you were the only person on this earth, the only one, God still would have sent his only son to come and endure all of that for you. That's how much he loves you. When is enough enough? I'll tell you when enough's enough. When we get to heaven, that's when it ends. So when you're going through something, I challenge you to be super prayerful and super cautious and conscientious about what you say, 
what you do and make sure you tell people positive things like this. Happy birthday, Anita. Isn't that a nice thing to say? What if she didn't have any friends at all and nobody to tell her happy birthday? When is enough enough? God should be enough for us. All we need in our lives is our Lord and Savior. Oh yes, we get caught up saying we need our friends, we need our cars, we need our skateboards, we need our wireless controllers for our game stations. All we need, we gotta have it, gotta have it. You don't understand, I need it, Mom, I need it. But what I wanna challenge you with, do you really need it or do you want it? Do you have 15 pairs of shoes? Do you need all 15? Now, sometimes you might. Do you really need them? Because there are so many people who could be blessed. Oh, hey, family! That could be blessed by what you could give them. I want you to realize enough is enough when we get to heaven. That's the only time it's going to end. So I thought that was a very important thing to mention tonight. That all the suffering and pain that Jesus endured, it didn't stop there. He died, right? But three days later, he rose again. He defeated death. He is victorious. He has a perfect record for winning everything he's ever challenged. Anything he's ever conquered has been a success story. Anything he has ever endured has turned to good. And I want you to remember that enough is enough when you determine I'm giving it all to God. That's when you determine you can do this with him, through him, because of him. Because see, he didn't stay in that grave. He got up and he walked right out of that grave. And he determined I am the one true God who is going to live forever in eternity with you if you give me yourself. So when we think about when is enough enough, when is it when somebody says something that we don't like what they say, or we disagree with what they have to say, or maybe we say something that's inappropriate. Ah, God already knew you're gonna do that. So don't be too hard on yourself. But if you're feeling sad or overwhelmed, or maybe a little anxious, we've had a couple of weeks back in school, or maybe this is your first week back in school, and you're starting to feel like, oh, the pressure, oh, I don't have the right shoes, I don't have, none of that's gonna matter. None of that's gonna matter. If we don't work for the treasures we can store in heaven, what we have on earth is gonna be a mood issue. That means it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter anymore. I want you to know, you can do this. You are amazing. You are wonderful. You are a child of the one true God. And you, my friend, are able to persevere and be victorious as long as you are in God's army. That's what I wanted to share with you tonight. And it just really hit me pretty heavy this evening. I thought, you know, I really need to share with these kiddos that enough is enough when you determine enough is enough by giving it to God. So don't ever feel like you've been betrayed, been left alone, or that someone isn't there for you because God is always there for you. Even though we can't hug him, he's not tangible here on this earth, he is still a part of our lives. And I don't want you to forget that. And I want you to remember how very important it is to show others your Christ-like attitude. Even something I think I've said before is easy to love the people who are good to you. But it's quite the challenge to love those who are mean to us or make fun of us or scold us or belittle us. That's when the true challenge comes in. But we have been called to love one another even when they sin against us. Because if we can't do that, can God forgive us? Ah, think about that. And you also have to remember that we're not perfect either. So remember the story when the guy owed a lot of money to the king and he was pardoned, he was forgiven his debt, and then he went out and he was like, hey, you owe me money. And he wasn't as kind, well then it came back and he got in big trouble for not forgiving the guy like he was forgiven. It's a really good lesson to understand that we have to forgive others who are not doing right by us. They're not doing things to be kind to us, they maybe aren't treating us right, we're still called to love them. And we're still called to let our light shine for Christ because that is all that matters. Do you wanna be on a winning team? Of course you do. Then why don't you be on God's team? He's never lost. That's a really great winning team. That's all I have for you guys tonight. I wanted to share that with you, so be brave. 
be bold, be courageous when you go to school, and let others know that you're not going to bow down to the ways of doing things wrong, that you're going to stand your ground, even if they hurt your feelings, even if they say things that aren't nice, and even if you're ridiculed or made fun of. Yes, it hurts, but God's a healer. Don't ever, ever give up on God, because he will never, ever forgive up on you. Oh, forgive up on you. He will, I was reading Paula's thing, be bold. He will never, ever give up on you. So yes, Paula, be bold. Be kind, be compassionate, be faithful. And when you're hurting, give it to God. Don't hang on to that nonsense. You let it go, you let it go, you give it to God. And I'll tell you what, when you determine how great your life can be through Christ, you have no idea how amazing those blessings are going to be. So be blessed. Thank you for sharing a little bit of your evening with me. And don't forget to follow Mrs. Jill, Bedtime Bible Stories with Mrs. Jill on YouTube. And follow theboldmovement.com on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. We have a lot of goodies out there. Really great podcast Bible studies that you can follow. And I want you to know you are loved. You are so loved. Don't ever forget how much God loves you. Be bold. I will talk to you guys tomorrow night. Bye, guys.